I'm Beach Billy. And I'm Danny. Hey, we're here today to teach you about the TT15 collar. All right, first, there has been three generations of TT15 collars. A lot of people don't realize, but Garmin has been working and making improvements on these over the years. So the first one is, if you actually look at the rubber on these, one of the biggest issues we've had with these is that the rubber itself, when the, of the previous, the very first generation, a lot of the rubber was cracking and different problems. Um, that would crack, it would end up breaking the wire from here to here, causing GPS signal. So if you look, the first generation had little holes going up where the wire runs about every half an inch. The second generation, they really have improved a lot on the rubber. A lot, these are definitely a tougher material, a lot less problems with it as far as corroding. Still had some issues with the wire because it is rubber, it would stretch more than what the other. So in circumstances, people yanking dogs up in the truck, um, you know, anytime it had a lot of stress, you would have a tendency to have that wire break and it would no longer get GPS signal making the collar worthless. Um, so they now have a new generation. This is fairly new. It hasn't had a lot of time to test. I do know it's the newer material, which has been tested really good. It seems to be holding up great. And it has, a, you can see where everything, the holes are tight together and it's got a little, it's got more of what we call a service loop. There's actually more slack in there on that wire, so it's much harder to grab or to break it, even if the rubber stretches a little. So um, these have now only been out for a short amount of time, but you should be seeing these in all your combos and all of your new collars. Um, anything that you traded in for new would also have this new type of material in it. As we're uh, discussing this with the TT15s today, everything we're talking about also applies with the T5s. With the T5, yes. Um, You're going to hear me say TT15 more than T5. Sorry, it's what I use. But right. all of this applies except for the correction and the training part of it. So That's right. You'll, uh, so you'll see everything else is the same. So they went through the same generation of rubber on the T5s, just the same. Linking the satellite. All right, this is something we get a lot. People get a collar in, brand new. Let's go ahead and we'll start. You can open up. Brand new collar. When you first get your collar, and first of all, it should have an outdoor dog supply sticker on your box. Um, as you can see, um, all of our collars are going to come with some type of premium strap. Uh, it's a much better grade strap than what actually comes in the box from Garmin. Uh, we have it's 15, no, 14 different reflective options. Mm -hmm. We have 17 different solid color options, six different pattern camo pattern options, and we have five now of the new like tough skin. It's like a glowing, it's a, it's a very, very hard material, cleans it's very smiling. easy and bright, but we only have five colors in that. So the, um, if you look, when we first turn a collar on, it's going to have a single blink. If you're inside metal roof, anything like that, you're going to more likely only see a single beep because, and you're not, it's not going to connect to your handheld because it uh, hasn't gotten GPS. It has right. to get GPS before it starts sending information to the handheld. Otherwise, it has no idea where it's at anyway, so there's no reason to send information. So as soon as this collar connects, you're going to start to see a double blink at first, typically, and then a triple blink. And what double blink is, is means it's now connected to satellite. Triple blink means, hey, we've connected to a bunch and we really know where we're at. Right. Um, fairly simple. And with the 15 collars, it works on two sets of satellites. It's working on the American version and the European version. So it's, it really, I mean, these collars pinpoint down to within feet once it's got a good connection. All right, so the three ways to add a handheld to, um, to a device, um, we're gonna go through those three ways. The first way is to go to your dog list and hit add dog. And then I'll turn this. It says, are, are you near the collar? Your collar has to be off. Yeah, collar has to be off. And you click yes. And you're going to hold the button down until you hear it double beep. Once you hear that loud double beep, you don't know reason to keep holding it. You can let it go. And it's going to link over to your box. So we're going to put it in as red yep. just to follow the color. Yep. Red spelled R-E-D, yes. Danny. Yes. Um, fat it's finger in it. <laughs> I tuned that in yesterday to my fingers. <laughs> All right, All right, so red's check. in there at the check mark. All right, so we're at OK. Now red's in. We're going to go in, show info. We're going to change the color to match. That's another That's reason right. that we really recommend get different color collars because you can put whatever. So you can see that it's already connected, communication, battery, everything's already hooked up on that. Yep. That's the first way. Second way, we go back to the dog list. 
you're going to hit add dog. And um, actually, we'll do that on this one since it'll be pretty easy. Um, no, we're going to go to any certain dog that we want to add to that list. And we're going to, so we'll go to black, go to show info. And then, so see the track and train code. So we'll go right to this one. We're going to hit enter. And these two are the same way. One, you push buttons. The other one, you hit the touch screen. That's but right. as far as adding and all, it's exactly the same. So it says, are you near the collar? We're going to say no. no. Do you know the tracker train code for the collar? And you're going to say yes. And then all you do is punch in that digit. So we're going to punch in the train code because we want to be able to turn your lights on and everything still with the 430. Same thing with an alpha. If you punch in the train code, you'll have control of the collar. If you punch in the track code, you will only be able to track. So if you're giving your son a handheld or that guy that you don't want messing with your dogs, only give him only the track give code. Him the train track code. Yep. yep. So we'll punch this in here. Zero. One. Seven. One. Five. Done. So now that is how you add a, a, a collar in. Um, and then we would do the same thing. That is black. So just very fast, we'll A. Done. All right. So black's now entered in mm -hmm. there. If we go to black, oops. Show info, you can see that the communication, everything's on. That is the collar right here. So it is now reading that collar, find that. Third way, we're going to go to the same dog list, add dog. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, let's, we'll do it on this other one again. It's easier to pull off of here. So we're going to go back. We're going to go to add dog. And are you near the collar? We're going to say no. You know the tracker train code? No. Do you want to receive information? Yes. And what this is going to do now is we're going to go to here and we're going to go to the orange collar and then see where it says share wirelessly. We're going to hit share wirelessly, track and train. It's going to send this information over to your 430. Which makes it really easy if you're adding a handheld to your uh, collection go. of collars. It took just a second but it's done so we're going to hit OK now if you notice this time it sent everything over including orange and it already sent the color that you had put on so when you send wirelessly you don't have to type in the name it's already there so that is how you do um, that's how you do that show info and you can see that battery life everything's there does it automatically change the track to orange it did because we had already done it in this one because we'd already done it in that one we okay. done it in that okay. one so, all right. Okay. All right. So now we're going to go uh, over the update rates on the collars. Um, the collars will come factory set under show info at a uh, 2.5 second update rate. So that means every 2.5 seconds it's updating with the satellites. Um, that can be changed at any time. Hit your menu button at the bottom of the yep, screen. Menu button at the bottom of the screen. Uh, you'll see change update rate. Um, you can run from 2 to 5, 10, 30, and 2 minutes. Um, a reason why you may want to extend your battery life, one, your dog's in a big block, you don't think you're going to get them right out, you can set, change the update rate, something happens, you don't think you're going to be able to get the dog back that day and you want to be able to come out in the morning, you're going to want to change the update rate. Um, we highly recommend changing the update rate versus using rescue mode. In the alpha only. Now, in the 430, you want to re what rescue mode will do is when that collar gets down to the last third of battery life, it's going to kick it to a two minute update. The advantage of that is it's going to add seven, eight hours very often time of recovery mode. So you're going to get 15 hours out of a two and a half second update on a collar, and then you're going to get another, say, 15 hours out of a two minute update rate. So it is going to give you the ability to be able to go back typically the following morning and still be able to at least track and recover that dog. That's right. With the alpha, I do not recommend at all for the fact that when your dog gets in a spot that he can't get to, it's already very easy for you to switch and change that update rate. So to give you battery life advantages, or um, to, to give you an idea, two and a half seconds, you get about 24 hours out of a TT15 right. collar and a T5 collar. 
five second update, you get approximately 36 hours. And this is really close. Um, so you already get a full day and almost the entire full set of daylight for five seconds. 10 seconds, 48 hours, 30 seconds, you know, you're getting up to like 56 hours. Now, two minutes, it really only adds a little more off of the 30 seconds because the collar is still having to communicate to satellite. This is just how often that it's talking to the handheld or sending a signal to talk to the handheld. So we really recommend most of our guys at Deer Hunt, they're running two and a half seconds or they're running five seconds. But what's really nice with this Alpha um, that you can't do on the 430 is if you've got to leave a dog or that dog hits a swamp, you might have only been running five hours. I'll change it to 30 seconds. Now I know I'm going to have the entire following day and probably part of the next That's right. to be able to get that dog if he doesn't come back out. And if you think you're so, not going to get him, go ahead and switch that update rescue, rate. It can't hurt to do it. Yes, and we hear it all the time. Rescue mode is going to keep it on two and a half seconds until it gets down to that bit of battery life. So you have wasted yep. all that battery life waiting for rescue mode to kick in and when a you could have changed time. it with the Alpha at any time. If you're on a rooftop, yep. you can talk to that collar two or three miles away. So that is very important. A lot of people don't understand that. Yep. Okay. Long and short range antennas. Um, it's exactly what it says. Longer the antenna, the further these <laughs> the further collars track. They track, that's right. Um, they come now with a 21 and a half inch antenna, um, the TT10s, and you have an 18 inch antenna that comes in the box. There is definitely no question that the 21 and a half, you know, if you stay within a mile or two, you're not gonna see a big difference. But what you do see the longer the antennas, is the longer you're going to see those stray beeps or you'll see that one connection where you might have picked it up four or five miles away um, it definitely makes a difference what else also makes a difference you see when these collars first come out of the box and they've got this curly q antenna a lot of people have a tendency to want to wrap and put it away like this well the more curled that antenna is you got to remember this isn't just acting like an antenna it's actually having to send a signal Yep. And which one do you think is going to send a longer, straighter signal, that or that? Right. So do know that also when you get, I'll recommend a lot of times, take your collars when you first get them new, or if you haven't put them in your bag like that, take a rubber band, strap it around them, and hang them up. The straighter this antenna, the further the, the you're going further to track. Distance. We get some phone calls about these antennas with some people who think the antenna is too long and talk about cutting it in half or uh, even cutting it in third uh, I can of the tell length. You, I've done the test. You cut this antenna in half, and you will cut you will cut your tracking abilities within five, ten times. I mean, you're just not yep. going to go. You're going to go it from seeing a work. mile to four or five hundred yards if you cut it that short. So just know the antenna is doing a very big purpose. Mm -hmm. It's a VHF signal. Everything VHF has antennas. It's not like a cell phone or running on a higher frequency. But there's a reason they run it, because it penetrates trees. It penetrates us by far the best frequency. Marine radios, police radios, all of that run on it because it's by far the most consistent signal to, to send an actual That's digital right. signal. All right. Thank you.